I know a lot of people, you know, watch this show in the post-production clips where they catch up on weekends, uh, what have you, or, or whatever it is. I mean, not everybody has the luxury of listening to a podcast from 9 to 11 a.m., right? That's, that's a, that's a, I mean, for all the shit that we're dealing with right now, and I don't, I mean, the thing is, it, it's tough to complain about this, right? Because even with this dark cloud of corona, well, I want to say life is pretty good. And in a sense, quality of life is incredible. I mean, would you rather go back in time 10,000 years, 100,000? Well, I guess see. To primi really primitive society, would you rather go back in time, you know, 100,000 years? Or would you rather be living today with coronaphobia? I think that's an obvious answer. But there's a huge amount of emotional manipulation that goes along with this. And this is something, like I said, I think I've, I've spoken about more in the past than in the current version of the show, because the current version of the show started while I was running for president and still had that political self-consciousness about me. It didn't say fuck nearly as much. Now I don't give a fuck. Now I say it just so that we can make sure that box gets checked for you to, uh, no, and I'm, I hope people appreciate, you know, like, I'm not a cursor. I don't, I mean, I guess I am a cursor, not a cursor, a cursor. Uh, and I I don't think I, I curse excessively. I think my use of colorful language is appropriate for the message that we're trying to convey here, because it is fundamentally an emotional message. And there are a lot of people in... Uh, the, the libertarian punditry sphere, the libertarian movement, community, whatever, who, in order to look good in a suit and sound right as a candidate, kind of give that up. And then they don't connect with people, and it's a real shame. And I think there's a kind of gas... There's so much... I've... The analysis of coronaphobia, the corona crisis we're in right now, with an eye to how much we are being gaslit is uh, is really important and for me has illuminated a lot of other ways that are just ongoing practices of government and the media to gaslight the general public and it, it, part of it's just normal political debate right i mean because it, it, it's more than debate it's not like hey we're going to have a you know rational you know, thesis, counter thesis, moderated debate. But in the, in the bigger sense of the debate, if you're trying to convince a portion of the American public to vote your way, red team socialism or blue team socialism, does it get old hearing me say that, Jim? No, no. Okay. I think it's so poignant. It's so perfectly descriptive of exactly what it is. It, it needs, it needs, brainwashed into people's minds, into the status. Yeah, in, in a way, I, it, it, it's sort of like, you know, I'm not a grammar Nazi, but I am a meaning Nazi. I'm a definition Nazi in that sense. I'm a stickler for precision in language. And so when, uh, you, you know, when we have these gaslighting phenomena, it's as simple as like you would in a conversation. Oh, you're crazy for believing that. Now, even that is a form of gaslighting, right? right. That's, that, that's the mild, the mildest form. And by most definitions, doesn't really count, right? Trying to make, yeah, you're crazy for believing that. Right. But when it's over and over and over and over and over again, and then it's going to the next level of, well, you didn't hear the, the, the people behind that narrative. They're crazy. The, the stories they are crazy. You know, we, we got the, the mainstream media, the television told us that you're crazy because you're a libertarian. It's, it, we are standing against a tide. Uh, a, a crap, I, I don't know how else to describe it. A, a, a continuous onslaught of gaslighting. And I hope that for our audience, listening to Adam versus the man is a kind of grounding Right, Jim? Does it, I mean... Yeah. I, I think I've actually, I mean, I didn't know you that much before you just jumped in here and started doing the show. But one of the reasons I love it is that it's grounding for me. 
five days a week, I get to check in with people who love and appreciate what I have to say, sharing my worldview, looking at the world, putting my unique lens on current events and presenting them to you. That's pretty grounding to me. When, I, when I'm not doing this, I've had a few times in my life when I've just like not followed the news at all. And it's a nice luxury, but it's also really weird, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you know, like am I... Do, do I still know what's going on? Am I still connected to the rest of humanity? And and it's tough when the majority of humanity is sort of on the other side of the debate as you are and, you know, wants you to think that you're crazy. So that you like, and, and this is just a basic phenomena of separating yourself from the herd. Just, just stepping out from the herd. Even in something that's not really controversial or not that political, right? Like just starting your own business. You know, like if you come from a family of underachievers, you know, who wanted nothing more than their wage slave job and their retirement and their needs met and don't rock the boat and vote for the American Socialist Party. Yeah, I guess I'll keep saying it because it, it needs to be repeated that we really have effectively one party rule in this country. If both parties are socialist and support the welfare state, the warfare state, the police state, the surveillance state, their differences are superficial, especially with Trump as a former Democrat. So in just stepping out from the herd, the rest of the herd is going to try to tell you that you're crazy. Yeah, better be prepared for it. Because if you're not crazy... They might have to face up to the fact that they're worthless pieces of shit who have allowed their lives to be dictated by the authority that they find themselves operating under. Yeah. What, a, what a pathetic existence. And so it's really important to stay grounded, to not let the gaslighting get to you, and at the same time recognize the deeply emotional and even spiritual nature of what it means to be a libertarian. Wait, I should rephrase that so it includes the words as a libertarian, as long as we're going over all of our cliches in the opener today. Woo! Jim, any, any thoughts on that? Any comments related to any of that? I, I, I'm glad I got to cover that because to me, this feels like this week was kind of a leveling up of the show now. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Don Dondre says, uh, thanks, Adam. I'll stay grounded, but I ain't taking nobody's shit. I have had enough. So I'm staying well, firm, which is also important, obviously. You gotta you gotta you have to stand. It's not we're not saying run away from it, you know. Now, I, I do want to share, and, and we might get to these stories, uh, you know, in depth later, but there are uh, a couple sort of encouraging stories that we got today. Uh, USA Today.com exclusive two thirds of Americans say they won't get COVID-19 vaccine when it's first available. I mean, it's sort of like that's that's a really, you know, we're, we're going to get into that it deserves to be uh sort of teased out, uh, understood what they mean by that number, you know, when it's not, won't get it when it's first available. But the, uh, if, if their neighbors don't grow a third arm, you know, then, then they'll take the vaccine without question. And, uh, you know, it is, it's sad, uh, but I, this is, this is, uh, th th this is how we're measuring it. It's not how many American, like, is it, it'd be nice if we were looking at how many Americans would, consider voting libertarian how many americans would you know look would would, would vote for uh something outside of the duopoly if they believe there was a viable option how many americans are uh, conscientiously engaging in tax resistance knowing that our taxes go to support the system of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor right but we're looking at the vaccine and and, and i'm I mean, I, I remain eternally optimistic. There's there's one other sh story. Uh, let's see. I think 
and we might get into this uh, from Forbes. Can you control your happiness? New study gives a scientific fact answer. And for those of you who are familiar with, uh, you know, with my message, with the book Freedom, you know that this idea of emotional freedom uh, is extremely important to me. That you, you, your, your concept of freedom is not just something external, but internal. And I can sum it up in, in 10 seconds to say, you are an animal, you will have responses to stimuli, but your response to the response is your choice. As long as you are happy and, or as long as you are uh, healthy and whole and your, your brain is functioning, you have a lot of power in determining your attitude and your mindset. That's a choice. And when we allow ourselves to be emotionally manipulated, whether it's, and it's, it's to take advantage of us one way or another, whether it's in a personal relationship or with a community leader or a national political leader, they're, they're, they, they are threatening your emotional freedom. There's a kind of emotional manipulation. And if you give into it, you are more vulnerable to the manipulation that is, is really driving that. So anyway.